You joined the club in 2021, and at that point, you know, the club had just survived by the skin of their teeth the season before. Yeah. Um, did you ever imagine that this club would go on and reach the AFC Champions League? Um, I didn't know what to expect, honestly. Um, I, I guess I didn't have, like, um, expectations. I guess when you come into a project like this, you're, you're always, like, um, optimistic. And um, so I... I everywhere I've gone in my career before I've been you know optimistic that you know we can have success and stuff um but yeah I didn't know I didn't know what to expect but um after seeing the sort of um the sort of like projection the club was on um yeah I started to think yeah hang on we can we can um we can make something happen here yeah well you we found out on Tuesday that you're playing Hai Pong from uh, Vietnam It'll yeah. be your first taste of uh, of ACL. Are you looking forward to it? Yeah, really excited. Um, I think it puts not only the club but like players like myself on on another platform as well. So and and that's kind of as a player, what you want to do is put yourself up against you know teams at you know high levels and and being able to um, see you know the different levels around Asia, which I think is a part of the world that maybe gets overlooked a little bit with its football. Maybe it's gaining a little bit more attention. Um, these days with, you know, higher profile players moving to different parts of Asia and stuff. But um, yeah, it, it makes that competition, that ACL competition, one that you can really come up against some some top players and top teams. So um, we we just need to make sure we get our foot in the door now, we, um, win this first game and get ourselves in there. And with this mm. squad, like, like you said, it is a strong squad now. Um, mm. You know, it might be fair to say, forgive me if I'm wrong, but in the K-League, you, you perhaps... One of the underdogs against a lot, you know, quite a lot of the teams. It's kind of that kind of uh, dynamic within John. But this game yeah. in the ACL playoff will be a bit different. You'll be the favourites. How how would you think you'd be able to manage that expectation and um, the pressure almost? Yeah, I think the um, as far as the K League goes, it's more of a history of the club that people look at us and probably still put us in that box as an underdog. Um, whereas, you know, we're we're trying to make the right. Um, move, I think the club's done a good job bringing in these, you know, um, quality players and stuff to put ourselves in a situation where we're, um, you know, producing results. Now we just need to produce the results. But, um, but yeah, as far as playing in a team, you know, from from a different country like like that, um, it's it's one that you can't take lightly. I, to be honest, I haven't watched a lot of the. Um, it's hard for us to watch, you know, games there. The coaches will get us ready as much as they can, and and I know that they've watched um, their games. I, I think they watched the qualifier and stuff like that. So um, we'll be prepared, and and they'll give us the information that we need. Um, but yeah, it's it's one of those things you can't overlook anyone. And and talking about the ACL for me, like we're not even we haven't even qualified yet. So um, if you start to look past these teams, it can be really really dangerous. Um, so that's yeah. something that we, we've got to focus on for sure. Yeah, well, obviously, you, you kind of touched on this already. You're not looking further po- further past the the playoff game, but yeah. Incheon, you know, you, they are hopefully heading into the into the competition at the at the right time because the last few years it's been sort of played in centralized hubs and things like that. Yeah. Now you have home and away. You're going to have your home fans there to mm. sort of get you through games because I'm sure there's mm. going to be if you do get through to the the group stage big clubs are going to come to Incheon and having those fans there, especially in this, um, the playoff game as well, they're, yeah. they're going to get you, get you through these games. Yeah, yeah, for sure. And I think it's one of those things where um, like the same with the, the COVID in the K league and stuff like that, it, it mixed up a lot of stuff, which was a little bit disappointing watching those games online, you know, not having the, the supporters there that you usually have. And I also think that a big part of it is um, the supporters that we have, are so important to us and have been so important in our success last year, getting us into the ACL, supporting us and sticking by us. And, you know, for a club that has battled it out at the bottom at times, they've, there's a lot of supporters that have stuck by this club for a long time. And for them to then have the experience themselves to be able to come to the stadium, it's kind of like, I feel like they deserve it as much as we deserve it, getting ourselves into the competition. They deserve to be able to, you know, play their role in it, which they do for us a lot. Um, so it's pretty cool. I think it'll be really cool. Um, I think it's big for them and it's big for us. So it's like, it's going to help us a lot at home, obviously. 
Yeah. Well, mm. you mentioned uh, the return of uh, a certain Stefan Magosha. Well, mm. I mean, I have to ask you about, about this, because obviously there was a video that was uploaded to uh, Instagram. It showed you having a, a FaceTime call with Stefan. Um, yeah. Did did you know he was on his way back? I mean, how, how informed were the rest of the squad? No, we I had no idea. It's funny, actually. I called him. We, we stayed in touch um, like pretty much the whole time he was gone. It's, we were pretty close. And then I called him probably three or four days before it was announced, just sort of to check in, see how he was doing and stuff. And he had this big smile on his face. And I was like, <laughs> what is going on? Like, but he didn't say anything. And um, then I just said, all right, we'll take care, man. Like, um, keep in touch, hung up. And then a few days later, I saw the news and I was like, there's no way he's, I was on the phone with him and he couldn't, because it was one of those things where like, you never know what, what can happen between clubs and people change their mind and blah, blah, blah. N not obviously Stefan, but the, everyone involved. Um, so he had to be pretty tight lipped about it. But um, well, after I talked to him, I said to him, bro, how did you not say anything to me? He was like, I thought you knew 100% when you called me, like, I was like, how has Delhi found out about this, blah, blah, blah. So it was pretty funny the way it worked out. Like just a few days later, he was back in Incheon again. But um, no, nah, it's it's great to have him back. He's he's obviously a huge player for us. He's he's good on and off the pitch. So um, I think it's going to give the club and the, the boys a bit of a lift as well. Add to our, you know, sort of firepower up front and, um, and put us in a good situation going into the stretch where there's important games. We've got a lot of them back to back and... You know, with injuries and this many games, it's it's good to have. It's good, great to have him back. So like you said, th th this day and age, the, with social media and everything like that, it's like people find out about stuff before us players even know. You know, so yeah. I was shocked. I was shocked how um, how quiet they kept it. But um, yeah, no, it was it was pretty crazy. Few days. I even saw the picture of myself, and I was like, I just spoke to the guy. There's no way he's coming back. <laughs> what? <laughs> Brilliant! So, it was uh, it was so good. Funny. Yeah, yeah. And obviously, and now obviously he scored his first goal since uh, coming back. So that mm -hmm. his goal in, in itself seems to have given the club a lift. You, you had a hand in, in that goal too. I think it was the assist for the assist, which I think Y Scout would call a second assist. So you had a, a hand in, <laughs> okay. in in yeah yeah you had, had a hand in that. What yeah. was that like? What what was the noise like in the stadium when that goal went in? Yeah, the place went nuts. I think. I think um, it was big for it was it was a goal that we needed at the time, obviously, and also for Stefan. I think it was important. You know, he hasn't had as many games as um, as you know normal. So for him coming back, he was he's, he's even he's been honest saying, you know, I'm not feeling like my full condition yet. So and coming off of you know coming back from Japan and stuff like that, it's. It's ne never easy returning. There's a lot of expectations on you. When he left, he was on flames, obviously, and scoring goals left, right, and center. So I think it was big for him to get that. Um, he's a confident guy anyways, but to sort of hit the ground running like that, I think it was important for him. And then, like, you could see when in the team as well, it gave us a lift in that game. And, and then I thought we sort of got on the front foot. The thing now for us, I think, to take the next step is when we get into the second half, and I think we sort of stop playing the way we were playing in the first half. That's one thing that I, I hope that we can continue to work on and sort of iron out the kinks because we have the players to control games like that. And controlling the first half half's great, but then the second half, I thought we dropped, dropped off a little bit. Yeah. Well, you've, mm. well you've had, you, you have hit form kind of at the right time. And it, I think the, it showed how resilient that you are as a team against Degu because you bounced back from that loss to John Book the game before. Yeah. It was a great performance as well against Daegu. Just a, almost the, the sort of perfect, complete home performance. Yeah, I think so. I think, um, you know, we defended when we needed to. We, we created some great chances and then obviously took them. Um, but that's what I think. That's what I think what I was saying earlier about the team having this depth. We don't like, there's still people like um, Gino that are still coming back from injury. Hernandez was out. Um, so I like when I say that the team has depth, I really feel like you know we, we're in a strong situation. Th these guys are getting close to being back as well. So there's competition in the group, which is always what you want as a coach. You know, players driving each other. Um, so I think we're in a good um, we're in a good mood right now. The win that win was big for us, and like I said, players coming back from injury that are going to be massive for us. It's been it's been a bummer th um, to have you know Gino out for so long. Um, but then, you know, look at people like G1 gets a goal and Myungju, you know, is obviously always solid in there. Doyok's been great. So 
um, yeah, it's it's. I think we're in a good a good way right now. And when these guys come back and add to that, it's going to be it, it'll be even better. Yeah, well, hopefully they do come back soon because you're you're sort of fighting on three fronts now. You know, with the FA Cup yeah. as well. That's obviously the semi-finals going to be played at some point soon. Um, yeah, what's that? What's that like? Sort of having three competitions where. You know, there, there are kind of all the priority, but you know, obviously there must be one. Obviously, the league surely must must be the top priority, as you said about the the Guangzhou game. How yeah. is the club balancing all this? Yeah, I mean, I think it's an absolute headache for the for the coach <laughs> picking which yeah. one he does prioritize, and you know, which one is more important for the club. If you know, if if we can get ourselves a trophy, the FA Cup is the, you know, the fastest way to get a trophy for the club. And if you look at it that way, for us as players, it's, it's kind of nice because, like I said, it sounds simple, but literally the next game that we have to play is the one that we focus on. And then the responsibility of managing the, the, the club and, and you know the where they're rotating players falls on the coaching staff. So... Lucky, luckily, we've got we've got a solid um, staff room, you know, front office and everything. So um, that that's kind of on them. I feel bad for them. I know the coaches have probably got a headache managing all of that, but it's problems that you want to have as well. Like I was saying about the club and the trajectory that it's that it's on, um, it's problems that you know you want to have. So obviously, for you, it's been different because you're classed as an Asian player with the AFC sort of player rule. But now, obviously, in K League, we have this. Um, new rules of foreign players where, where, where teams can have more than three non-Asian foreigners and then you, obviously Hernandez has picked up an injury but for a spell there there was obviously four foreign players all vying for the sort of three front spots yeah. and that competition it must, it must be good because obviously it's going to bring the best out of the players but um, yeah. I mean was it ever a bit awkward because you feel a bit awkward that since Magosa came back and Hernandez thinking well is it my place in the in the team, or is it Mpoku? Is it him look, looking over yeah. his shoulder? You know, I think it's in a squad that's like um, that's set up the way we are. That's the point of the, what the coaches set up is that, that there's never a flat spot in the season where players kind of sit back and go, oh, "I've played well a few games in a row, and now I'm sort of going to coast." And you can't do that when with this setup. And whether you're foreign or you know Korean players. You want to have you want to have that sort of motivation. I think some players even need it. I think um, so. I, I think that's what they've sort of set up. I don't think they would have brought in these players if they didn't want to have that um, have that sort of dynamic about the squad. And it's it keeps us on our toes. If if the motivation of you know being in three competitions isn't enough, then keeping yourself on the pitch is is the very next thing I would say. So I think for us, it's a good problem. There, there hasn't been, to be honest with you, there hasn't been any sort of awkwardness yet. I think there's been players, you know, injured here and coming in and and the coach here as well also likes to rotate as well anyway. So yeah. I think if you're not, if you're not okay with that, then you, you got, you know, sort of bigger problems. But um, yeah, to be honest with you, we haven't experienced that yet, but I do, I do know what you mean. Players, players definitely get motivation from that sort of pressure. And we've also seen a good, already a good understanding between Magosa and Gerso. They linked up well together for both of their goals yeah. against Daegu. That must be great for yeah. you to see. You sort of sit back, you can all it's in front of you, and you can see this already. You've got a good under, understanding. Yeah, well, that's the thing. I think uh, there had been times over the past few years where I think there was a lot of attention on Stefan, especially when he was scoring a lot of goals, and teams would sort of focus on him a lot. You know, so it made it made it hard on him to get free opportunities um so i think for him it's great when there's you know other guys that you know s sort of force the team other teams to focus on them i think the you were talking about the four players obviously they can't all play at the same time but each one of them i think complements each other really well whether it's polo you know coming and getting the ball stefan staying central gesso going behind or linking up you know hernandez can come and go so it's I think they would can all work together, and we've seen that over the over the course of the season so far. You know, even before Stefan was here, that there are guys that link up really well, and um, so it, I think it's I think it could be really good. Yeah, well, it was a bit of a tough start and a bit of a sticky patch um, towards the sort of start of the season. Mm -hmm. Obviously, as we said, it is working now. What what wasn't working? Do you think at the, at the start of the campaign that is now finally sort of falling in, into place? 
Yeah, I know. Yeah, I, I think everyone at the club and supporters as well would could recognize that when you've got this many, you know, players that you brought in, we people expected results straight away, and they weren't coming, and and our performances weren't great, and it's hard to put my finger on one thing. I think, I think. Even though we had a, a bit of a core group that came back, there were some big pieces that sort of came in and had to sort of fit together straight away. We had a good preseason, and I thought I thought I sort of you know it's sort of starting to come together. But the K League's crazy when 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 you don't get a few results in a row, it's like the games are just coming thick and fast, and and you've got to sort of work it out on the run. And I think there were times where um, instead of building on the way we wanted to play, we were sort of trying to just like scrap out results and they weren't coming. And then the, the you know, expectations building. And then the, I, I think you could see that in players a little bit, the frustration and stuff like that. Um, so I, it, we definitely got bogged down a little bit, I think in the beginning and, and, you know, even through the middle, we weren't like losing a lot of games, but we weren't getting results that I feel like we should have been getting. Um, so in the like in the middle of the season that sort of patch it's hard to put my finger on one thing but i just think there were so many players that came in that were going to play a big role that it was taking some time to gel and the only real way to do that is in games because you can't yeah. replicate it in training um True. but i do think i do think we're, we're headed in the right direction and i think the the good thing for us is there's still a lot of room for us to um put even better performances together and start to like control games more um, rather than just like scrapping out results, like I said. Yeah, fair enough. Well, mm. Harrison, thank you very much for your time today. Good luck, Thanks, and uh, good luck, good luck in the ACL. And hopefully, I'll uh, I'll see you soon. Yeah, that'd be great. Take care, man. Appreciate it. Thanks, mate. Cheers. Thank you. Bye. Bye.